Guys, you remember the 750? Started on a long time ago, about it like all my other projects. See, I get so many of these time-consuming projects. You know the story. It's just, I just get to them when I can. I got everybody's on my ass. I've been working on that. I I know I'll catch grief about it, about the fuel truck that we did the carb conversion. I've almost got it ready to start. Uh, those guys have been super patient with me. They... They know I'm busier than hell, and everything's coming at me at one time, and they're in the same way. They're the same boat. I mean, everybody that works for a living right now is is behind because you can't get any help. You can't get parts. It's just, you just do what you can. That's all you can do. That being said, on this old girl here, we got the control valve completely rebuilt, and it helped it a whole lot. It has way better control. Uh, the owner was right here with me. He goes, it's getting around a lot better. He said, but what, what happens is, so what we did, this is old places. They're clean. He's cleaning this place up here. So what I did, it was turning and counter rotating a lot better than it was, but it just still didn't have the power. So I put my blade up against that pile of shit there and just put her full forward. And what is happening, the left track spins and the right track. We got a problem with, we got a problem with that right track. And I'll tell you another way that you can tell with our right hydrostatic. If you read this steering system check, with the engine at slow idle, move forward and neutral reverse about one inch and two forward, and observe charge pressure while steering to the stop and counter rotate position for left and right track. If charge pressure drops excessively, transmission being powered may have excessive leakage. If See, if charge pressure drops excessively, transmission being powered may have excessive leakage. If track does not stop and counter rotate. So, yeah. So I'll show you. I'll show you. So we know that the left track will sit there and spin and dig a hole. Well, you can kind of see where the left track was. I don't know if it can or not, but you can kind of tell where the left track was. Yeah, see, it was... If I really hogged into it, the left track could start spinning. The right track never would. Never would do anything. But you hit the right pedal, and the charge pressure goes down. Hopefully my warms. See, it actually, when the oil's cold, it doesn't. It acts pretty, pretty good. As soon as that oil warms up, that's when she falls on her face. Let's just test her out real quick, see if it still does the same thing that I was seeing before. Our charge pressure for idling. Watch the charge pressure. There, see, watch it drop, okay? Which is fine because there's an operating charge relief and a neutral charge relief. So I'm going to hit the left brake pedal. See how it changed when I use the right brake pedal? It came up actually.
it's not doing the same thing that it was before. It's actually going up in pressure when you hit the right brake pedal now. Before, it was going down. Now it's changed. I wonder if I ought to go drive it, though. Let's look at the... I'm going to look at the theory of operation before I... So it tells you the track that's being powered. So does that mean it's being powered when you're hitting the right pedal? The right one's being powered? I'm not sure. Let me read theory of operation here. Okay. Here's a here's the little chart. Action. Transmission. Uh, transmission oil operating temperature. Automatic control valve. Sh handle. Shut off. Handle down. Engine fast idle. Operate a unit under load. Stall. Load to stall tracks. Question. Does charge pressure on gauge drop excessively? Yes, it does. Go over here. Action. Forward neutral reverse. Control handle forward. Operate unit under load. Push down steering pedals one at a time. Watch charge pressure. The pedal that causes charge pressure to rise indicates problem transmission. Well, you guys saw the pressure rise. And a minute ago, it was dropping. So then... We're going to run that little test just real quick. Action, remove load, move forward, neutral, reverse, control handle through full range. Is charge pressure related to phasing or direction? Let's do this test right here. We'll put her back up against that bank and see what it does and watch our pedals. <clears throat>
almost certain it's in the right side. So let's look at the book a little more. Uh, yeah, the pressure goes up when you hit the right pedal. Let's do a little more reading here. So, so we know that four neutral can go on forward, hop rate right until check the pedal that causes charge pressure to rise indicates problem transmission. Okay, action. Move load. Is charge pressure loss related to phasing or direction? I think it's more, to me, it seems like it's more related to phasing. Uh, once you get a little motor speed out of it. So I, I, th I think... I think phasing, okay, phasing, check operating charge relief valve, we already did that, motor servo, cylinder o-ring, and pump valve and bearing plate separation, check bypass valve, let's see, so no would be over here, I gotta make sure that I'm getting this phasing thing figured out. It's not directional. Okay, so it's not directional because it does exactly the same thing in it does exactly the same thing in forward or reverse. It's not directional. It's it's when the motor's being phased. Cuz if 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 the charge pressure didn't leak down in forward but it didn't reverse, then you know it would be directional. So it's in the phasing circuit of it. And we've already had the operating charge relief valve out of this thing and it's they're they're fine. So the, the thing next to be motor servo, cylinder, o-ring, and pump valve and bearing plate separation, which is more than likely what it is. <laughs> so let's see what we got to do to check about that.
nest in there for wasps. You gotta kill those bastards. here. Look at them right in there. Here we go. Yeah, that'll get them good and pissed off. Tighten that valve up when that shut off, it's leaking. Is that better? Okay. The wasp here, let's see. Give him a little shot. There you go. I give him a little shot there. Die. Okay, here's our here's what we're trying to access. Now we're gonna move this plate. Get that out of the way. And then the battery tray will come out of it. Uh, I think the battery tray, yeah, I gotta take one more bolt loose on the battery tray, and then I can remove this plate. Alright. I'm gonna cheat. I'm going to cheat. Let's see, I need to go that way. Push on it. Got the sump drain. 25 gallons of oil. That one should be loose. Oh, I sure thought it was. now okay let's go ahead and take this one clear off Let's see if I can swing it over out of the way and I'll have to cap this with that cat plug kit and cap these I don't have a uh, this line is going to be full of oil 
The tank's empty though. But the hose will be full of oil. It's not anymore though. Okay, let me get some plug and caps. swung out here Pressure wash and pressure wash and pressure wash, and I still didn't get all the crap out of it. Gee whiz. Shit is built up in there like you wouldn't believe, man. So, this so far here looks pretty good. I gotta get some floor sweep. Typical hydrostat job. There's oil everywhere. Anyway, on this on this swash, this is your swash plate right here. It's a pretty good size swash plate. But see here, I don't know if the camera is picking that up or not. Let me get my phone. See the servo pistons all scratched up real bad. That's that's causing a lot of our problems right there. So that's causing a lot of our charge pressure loss across that servo piston. Uh, the rotating group looked really good in it. This would be the rotating group here. Here's the piston block where the pistons go in. Here's the pistons. Those all look pretty damn good. You just got to be really careful on those. There's a bearing plate here. You got to make sure you don't scratch 
You don't want to scratch this or scratch that bearing plate. You got to be really careful when you're pulling them apart. But we need a servo piston and a servo cylinder right now. But tomorrow morning I'm going to get up early and I'm going to tear this pump apart. So that'll be tomorrow morning. I'm whipped for the day and uh, tomorrow's another day. But I think we're on the road to success now. We've definitely found a major contributor to our charge pressure problem. Anyhow, thanks for watching. I'll, I'll probably video tearing that pump apart in the morning. Making a separate video about that.